Welcome to the Burton Ballers. Ain't got no time for no stallers. Yeah. We are the risers. We're not the fallers. Our channel is growing wider and taller. Yeah. We're here to give you the news about your dear beloved blues. Yeah. So if you like this YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and turn on that bell. Yeah. Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of um, Burton Borders and in today's video I'm going to be talking about our 3-1 um, victory against Brighton yesterday. But before I get into the video, you know what to do guys, like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on all post notifications so that we'll be notified every time um, when we make a new video. We're trying to get to 5,000 before September. So we've got 15 days to try and hit that magic 5,000 subscriber mark. So if you've got friends, um, introduce them to the channel. Um, so if they want um, Chelsea related content. Apologies in advance. Um, there's lots of works going on, on on my street at the moment. Maybe lots of people didn't go on holiday this, this year because of the, um, the lockdown situation. So most people are getting their houses done. There's so many loft conversions going on in, in, in my area. Um, ourselves, we're doing a new garden. Um, I sh I'll show you a picture of the before and after um, a bit later. So we're getting some artificial grass in. Probably gonna get a few gold nets in for the boys to um, practice their footballing skills as well. So, um, yeah, so you hear that noise in the background, it's, it's all that um, work which is going on. So anyway, back to the uh, main uh, thing we're here to discuss, and that's the game yesterday, the 3-1 uh, victory over Brighton. And if anyone had watched my um, preview video, I don't want to sound smug, but I did say I told you so, because a lot of people were expecting um, a, a standout performance. Everyone was expecting us to... Um, be playing you know this fantastic football from day one because of all the the players that we've bought in and there was a feel-good factor around the club and they just thought it would click straight away but I did say be cautious guys be cautious and Frank alluded to that in his post-match press conference when he said you know these are still new players you know Kai Havertz has only trained with us for one week and as I predicted you go onto Twitter and there's people saying uh, what a poor buy, what a waste of money. Come on, really? People, is th this, we're living in such a toxic world now is that people um, judge players in the first half of their debut and they make criticism. You know, people are saying, oh, no, I don't want to get into that. But guys, he needs time. Yeah, just because he was, he came, you know, that's what I say. When you hype up a player so much, you expect big things from them from the from the start. It's not gonna happen. He's a young guy, he's 20. He's just come into a new country. He's got to adapt, got to get used to the pace of the Premier League. And he did some good things, you know. Maybe he wasn't, you know, he didn't do some really outstanding things that you sit back and say, whoa. But he did some some things, you know, some, some of his, he was very assured on the board. He's quite calm. He brought a bit of calmness to our play. And he showed a lot of character, that 80 yard dash back to win the ball back in the 70th minute or something like that. So that just shows that he, he didn't, um, uh, his head didn't drop at all in that performance. And for, it was a, okay, but it wasn't a great performance. No, but it was an okay performance. And I expect more of him yeah, as he gets used to the pace of the Premier League, as he gets gelled with the players around him. So we've got a star in the making, but he does need patience, guys. Um, somebody who didn't need it, because I mean, you think, so, and again, some people are comparing it with Fernandez, Bruno Fernandez, when he came, he had, you know, he hit the ground run at Manchester United, but you've got to remember, Bruno Fernandez is, what, 25, 26, so he's got that little bit more experience than Kai Havertz, and someone else who's got a little bit more experience, and it showed in his mature performance yesterday, was uh, Timo Werner, because I thought Timo Werner was excellent yesterday, his, his, his movement was great, his pace, and now we've got a, a striker who's got devastating pace, and it's going to be fantastic to watch, you know, some of the, I saw some great signs from him, um, as I said, one time I actually thought he was offside, but then you saw it again, the movement was so good, and he likes to play 
play on the shoulder of that last defender. So was, at, at times he's gonna be caught offside. He was a caught offside, I think, a couple of times early doors, but once he started to time those runs a bit better, I thought that he was uh, really, you know, really good. And he was, had that shot at the near post, that the early shot which uh, the goalkeeper um, did well to save and had lost his cheek, had a bit more confidence and knocked it to him earlier, then um, Timo Werner could have had a debut goal. So um, talking about Loftus-Cheek, again, I'm hearing a lot of criticism about Loftus-Cheek and I was watching the post-match comments by the two Sky pundits, Gary Neville and um, Jamie Carragher, where they were saying that 24-25, uh, his career hasn't kicked on and he should move away from Chelsea if he wants to progress in his career. Um, guys, before you talk, do your homework. You know, it's, it's quite embarrassing at times because if you look at Loftus-Cheek, okay, as he, you know, at 24, 25, should he be further ahead, ahead in his career? Probably. But it's not nothing to do with the lack of game time he's getting at Chelsea. It's more to do with unfortunate injuries. This guy hasn't had a full season. Even at Crystal Palace, when he had that decent season at Crystal Palace, he was out of the side a little, a little bit through injuries. And last season, he had that really bad, or the season before, the really bad Achilles heel injury. And it was worse than the, the one that Callum hudson Doy suffered. And so he's, you can see that he's not got his rhythm back because... You know, they said he hasn't had a standout season at Chelsea, didn't well, Hello, when you're watching that second half of the season at Andasari, him and Hazard that season were superb. And I think um, that that injury just sort of uh, pushed his career back a little bit. Um, so uh, I, there's a good player there, you know. My only concern with Ruben Loftus-Cheek is the, the amount of injuries that he has, because uh, before it used to be that niggling back injury, and then obviously the Achilles. So sometimes, Players in their career, when they when they start with these injuries, it carries throughout their career. I'm not sure the older ones remember a guy called Darren Anderton. He was another guy who was pleased to play for Tottenham, showed a lot of promise, but he was he, he got the nickname Sick Note because he, he never lasted a full season. Um, we saw that with Alana yesterday at, for Brighton. Um, again, uh, another guy who is career has been blighted with a lot of injuries so um, Loftus-Cheek may be going down that route unfortunately and that's that's such a shame for the guy because he's you know a fit Loftus-Cheek is a top class center, uh, uh, central midfielder so I'm just hoping that he comes back. I wouldn't have started him yesterday, to be fair, because I, I still don't think he's up to speed. I'd have sort of given him a 15, 20 minute run out. I'll sort of try and ease, play him in the cup games and everything else, get his um, momentum back. Even play him in a few of the um, under 23 development games just to get back that fitness, that touch, that confidence, you know. But, you know, I'm not gonna be criticizing him because I understand the context behind what's happening. Um, somebody I will be criticising though is uh, Kepa. Um, I was doing a live uh, f uh, review after the game and uh, I was quite critical. Uh, no, I wasn't actually critical. I was kind of critical, but I was giving him a bit of a pass as well. Um, and some p people on, on the chat were saying, why are you being so critical of, of Kepa? And, but um, actually, if it, look back at that I should have been more critical than I actually was because I was saying it was a great shot you scored a, I can't remember who scored a Brighton goal um, I said it was a great shot uh, but looking at it again it was a saveable shot sorry and um, the, the one thing I do agree with Gary Neville and and uh, Carragher over is top goalkeepers save those kind of uh, shots. Um, I was doing my live stream at the same time. I did so I didn't watch the pre-match um, pre uh, post-match analysis. So it's not that I'm copying these two, but or we're on the same leg, same same wavelength. I said if you're going to win the league, you don't do it with a goalkeeper like Kepa. You know, you're not going to win it with a goalkeeper like Kepa. You know that shot was easily saveable. It's gone under the goalkeeper's arms. You know, and I've seen him do that so many times last season. Um, so for me, that was a last chance saloon. So um, 
he's got to he's got to go. So Mendy's got to come in when 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 we get him in, he's got to come in. And hopefully you'll notice a big difference. You know, all these Kepa supporters, I you know, I don't like knocking players unless it's just it's deserved. And with Kepa, he's had too many chances, you know, it's not as if it's a, a one off. He's a he carried out through last season and this season you thought with competition coming in, he would have stepped up. But He's just a, it's just not nothing to do with lack of confidence. He's just not a good goalkeeper. Panic by and he shows, you know. So, um, so it timed that for, for me with, with Kepa, sorry. Uh, so, uh, going back to the game, I thought, yeah, we, we didn't play well, you know, and it's, we could see that we didn't, we only played one match in, in, in the pre season, and it showed because we weren't cohesive, we weren't gelling together. But the positive about that is that we got the three points. Last season, if we didn't play well, we'd be punished. But, you know, I saw some decent, good signs in defence. You know, just did a few shaky moments. I thought um, both Zuma and Christensen were quite solid. Um, after a shaky-ish first half, uh, Reese James came back. And you know what? Um, all these people, again, reactionary supporters, because um, Lamptey... I, I did say Lamptey had a better first half than... Reese James, which is a fact, but I wasn't getting all reactionary because I saw some some comments. Why did we get rid of Lamptey? We should have kept him. He's a better player than Reese James or whatever. He's having a better game. Doesn't mean he was a better player. So uh, it's just like Reese James was probably looking at sneakily got his phone out during half time, saw these comments and said, you know what? I should tell these Chelsea fans why I'm ahead of Lamptey in the pecking order. And boy, did he show up with that goal. What a superb strike that was. Oh. Top bins, yeah, great goal. And his second half performance was great. He put in some nice dangerous crosses as well. Once he has Ziyech coming inside and him overlapping, that's going to be a fantastic uh, partnership down that right-hand side because he's going to be whipping in the crosses with his right foot and then uh, Ziyech is going to be changing the angle by curling it in on with his left. So that's going to cause more danger when, when those two um, start to gel down that side. Um, Jorginho, I was surprised to see him play today, but he played okay. He was steady. He kept, he was, he was quite assured. And guys, he originated that penalty. Biased by the commentators. If anyone's got up in England watching Sky, they said, oh, he's he's doing a, he dared a cheek to say that he's doing a Bruno Fernandes penalty. Hello? Who was in the Premier League before? Who's copying who? You know, he's the guy who originated that little jump before taking the penalty. And that's just so biased. Come on, guys, do your homework. And uh, so, obviously, Brighton came back into the game. But, you know, before we had a chance to start um, criticising Frank and the team or whatever, Reese James came, put us 2-1 up. And then we we scored a third to settle it. We scored a third like, Zuma. Um, James, first goal, a league goal for Chelsea, so well done. And Kurt Zuma um, didn't score at all last season. Um, aid of a deflection, but we scored from a set play, which is good, you know. Uh, deflection or not, you know, you, you st you know, you're still going on target. So, yeah, 3-1. Brighton played well, you know. Brighton deserved a bit more, if I'm being honest, out of the game. Um, you know, they, they could have got back to 2-2 with a header by um, Lewis Dunk. But... Um, yeah, but yeah, they they did good. They did they played well in their first game. But again, you know, we've got that quality now, that extra bit of quality. You saw it with Werner when he won the penalty. You know how sharp he was to react. His pace around the goalkeeper got brought down. So um, and remember, we got there's more to come, guys. We've got um, Thiago Silva to come to shore up the back line. Uh, we've got Ziyech to come, and uh, the sooner Ben Chilwell's fit, the better because. Uh, Alonso for me it was just another one who was an accident waiting to happen you know it does not on the game always slow to react so yeah so yeah we will we'll improve you know, you know we've got the players we've got the personnel coming in to improve us so big game against Liverpool on uh, Sunday we've got to play better than we did uh, yesterday but hopefully that game would have blown off some of the cobwebs and you know it's always uh, we're going to be up for that game, especially Lampard is going to want us to get one over Klopp, especially after his comments when we played him at Anfield the other day and obviously his comments about us in the transfer market. So that's motivation enough. And for me, Timo Werner's response afterwards, of, you know, when he, he's got a dead leg, are you going to be fit for that game? He doesn't want to be playing in games like that. So he's going to be ready. He's going to be up for it. And he wants to put, he's going to want to put one over Klopp as well. So I'm looking forward to the game on on. Um, uh, Sunday, and I think the way that Liverpool played their high line 
us with our pace, I think we can get something out of that game. So guys, comment below, what do you think of the game? Um, do you agree with my comments? Are you, or am I being a bit harsh on some players like Kepler, do you think? Or let me know your thoughts and opinions below. Until then, we'll see you on the next video. Take care, bye-bye.